Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Look. So, did you think I'd go all the way to Greece and not bring back one of the most classic things there is to eat? I'm talking something we can just grab on the go when we go through sometimes shopping malls or like when I was a kid, the flea market in Comac, or that place, or running to a business meeting or walking through Central Park or of course, strolling down the streets of Athens. Guys, there's this thing they call, everyone knows them, they're called gyros. Now, I'm not gonna say gyros because sometimes people pronounce them that, I normally do too, because people will yell at me and say, it's pronounced gyro. So we're gonna call it the right way. Euro and I'm gonna make them for you in the instant pot today. This is no frills cooking at its best now in typical Jeffrey fashion This is totally an unconventional way to make euros because the meat ingredient that I use most people wouldn't do to make euros That means we're not going to be mashing together any different meats in a food processor and then putting them in a mold and then fusing them together We're not doing any of that This is gonna be the easiest way to do them ever and by using the method and meat that I am going to use It's actually I find a lot more in line with how they serve gyros in Greece. It's definitely not the same way it's prepared, but the way that the meat is shaved in more of like a thicker, juicier fashion, that's how I do it. So guys, put on some blue and white because we're about to make some gyros that are out of sight. Let's go to the Instant Pot and do it. Now I told you this is gonna be totally unconventional, but it's gonna be awesome, I guarantee you this. So for my meat, what I wanna use is between a three to four pound rack of baby back ribs. Yep, with the bones in them and everything. But don't worry, this is gonna cook so tenderly, the bones are gonna slide right out. And then I just wanna coil that inside of my Instant Pot. Next, I wanna add in six cups of chicken broth. And I'm using six teaspoons of chicken better than bouillon mixed with six cups of water. Combined with the juice of two lemons. And I'm gonna secure my lid, make sure that I'm in sealing position. So I wanna come down to my Instant Pot control panel, hit the manual or pressure cook button depending on your model, and I wanna go for 25 minutes at high pressure. That's it. And while our meat's cooking in the Instant Pot, let's create our spice mixture. This is where the magic's gonna happen. I wanna take one teaspoon of ground coriander, one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of chili powder, a half a teaspoon of dried oregano, a half a teaspoon of dried thyme, a half a teaspoon of paprika, and an eighth of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Mix everything up. And one final touch that's gonna make this marinade extra, extra special is some garlic better than bouillon. I'll link to where you can get it on my website, or you can find it in many supermarkets as well. Some carry them. But if you can't find them, I'll link it. I'm adding one eighth of a teaspoon. And then I'm just gonna mix that up with the rest. And we're creating this amazing marinade to baste over that fall apart pork. You'll see. Now that our cooking cycle is complete, we're gonna allow a five minute natural release. That means we do nothing for five minutes and wait until this counts up to the number five where the steam releases on its own naturally and then we'll follow that with a quick release. So while the natural release is occurring, I wanna to go to my oven and I wanna preheat it for 400 degrees. And now that five minutes of a natural release have passed, we'll finish it off with a quick release. And now that our pin dropped, let's take our lid off. And there are our ribs. Now, they're not gonna look beautiful when they come out of there. Believe me, they're not. But that doesn't make any difference because it's about the flavor and we're about to make them look pretty. So let's just remove them with some tongs and then place them on a cutting board. Now to show you just how tender this is, you're gonna see the bones are literally just gonna pull out of the ribs, just like this. Pulling the bone right out. I just want that meat. And then once I've taken all the bones out of my rib meat and shredded it up a bit with some forks or by hand if your hands are clean or you can even use a stand mixer which is really quick, I'm now gonna take my fantastic marinade here and then just brush it all over the meat. Really get every last drop of that marinade on the meat and then just brush it on throughout. And there we go. Now it's time to pop this into the oven. And I'll open my oven up, pull out the rack. I want this on about the middle rack. Pop it in and then let it sit in there at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes have passed, I'm going to take my delicious meat out of the oven and look at this sizzling and delicious. And there, folks, is my gyro meat, or gyro meat, or whatever you want to call it. But in terms of the way it's cut up into thick chunks, that's exactly how they do it in Greece. So let's assemble a gyro, I mean gyro, you know. Look at how lovely this is. 
Very nice. And now that I've transferred all of our beautiful gyro to a bowl, I'm going to now assemble a pita. Now, many people like to put tomatoes and onions in theirs and sometimes even lettuce, but I'm really simple. I just like some tzatziki in mine. That's really all I like to put in because above all else, I feel like the flavor should come from the gyro meat. But of course, you could put some lettuce, tomato, cucumbers, or even pineapple inside of your gyro, whatever you want. The rules are yours. Now I'm gonna put some of this delicious meat inside. Mmm, fabulous. And now I'm gonna roll my pita up just like so. And this is looking awesome. Can you believe that this is meat from baby back ribs? <laughs> it's perfect for this. Okay, and now let's try it out. Mmm. Mmm. That is some tender, flavorful, juicy, delicious meat. I, I, listen, you want to call it a gyro, you want to call it a gyro, I need a gyro to get myself through the night. And you saw how crazy easy this is to make, didn't you? I and mean, you barely have to do anything. It's really that simple and that delicious. It is no wonder this is one of the most classic things to get on the go, have it in a restaurant, and just enjoy it anytime. I feel like I am walking right now up to the Acropolis and burning off the calories as I eat this. Guys, if you enjoyed these recipes, go to PressureLookCooking.com because I have a ton of them there and you can pin any recipe to any board on Pinterest just by hovering over a photo. It's that simple. Of course, go to my Facebook, which is Facebook.com slash PressureLookCooking and like that page for all updates. For any alerts on sales, any humor, you never know what you might find there. You definitely want to like that page. And of course, at PressureLook to subscribe to me on YouTube. You don't want to miss any of my videos. They're all there. As well as Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. I have all that stuff. Thank you so much again for all your support. Support. And I know that sometimes I speak fast and it's hard to understand what I say, but once you take a bite of this Euro, it's all Greek to me. Mm. Enjoy. Enjoy.